interesting that if a young person wants to go to college, we cannot afford to give them maybe two, three thousand dollars a year. But if one of them comes and stops us all of a sudden, we can spend fifty thousand dollars a year to the There is something fundamentally wrong with that. I would just share with you, from the national perspective, things that, that, that occur, concerns and issues that occur uh, articulated here, uh, issues in, in, in the Davis community are, are reflective of larger issues in the larger you know, society. So I wouldn't want you to think that it's something particular or peculiar to you. Certainly, and, and I'm encouraged to hear that, one, that you're saying them, naming them, out loud talking about them in a community forum and and that you have some um, some ideas as to how to address them like the achievement gap um, having a conversation about um, the over incarceration of Americans in general and, and blacks in particular um, and it's something that we'll have to address as a nation it's wonderful and beautiful that each individual community comes together and wants to make their community better. But because these issues play out on the national stage, I invite you, I implore you to also get involved at the national level. Because we have to change the, the tone and tenor of the conversation at the national level. Otherwise, I'm fearful that, that, that policy, policies won't, national policies won't support the work that you're doing on the, at, at the local level. So, um, as, as, as we prepare for this upcoming presidential election and congressional um, election, I invite you to think about and remember these things. These things that are important to your community, community the city of Davis. The achievement gap is important here. It's important across the country. Over-incarceration is important everywhere. Racial profiling happens everywhere. It's not a surprise to me that it happens in Davis. But we have to address these issues as a country. So I, I, I just invite you to get involved at the national level as well. I think it's important to, to take note that we don't live in a post-racial society. Um, by by post-racial I'm describing the rhetoric of, of people that believe that there are no racial conflicts left, everything is overblown, and all of that is already like done with, and everything's equal. Because things aren't that way, you know, the, the statistics prove it, and if we really, really think about it, we all know that that's not true. Um, just because race relations in the United States is better than it's ever been, doesn't mean that it's the best it can be. I would frame my final remarks in the larger context of democracy. The way democracy is taught in our schools and in the media is that the founding fathers gave us democracy. They gave us some laws and principles and so on that established that whole thing. But really, if you think about it and look at our history, democracy is a work in progress. And it's never finished. Um, and so it's like, you know, jazz musicians. They never really finish their performance. It's always evolving. So um, we all have, to, as long as we live and breathe, I think we all have to keep being committed to the notion of democracy and look at what we can each do um, all the time. Maybe it's just to inform ourselves more about what the issues are that still play in the country or what have you. But we have a, a, an obligation, a commitment to try to make democracy advance. So while we talk about racial issues or gender issues or you know, sexual preference issues or whatever, 
it's all within the context of this larger democratic experiment that we're trying to, to keep moving here. And that's what we have to keep our, our eye on. While we've seen equality move forward, we're still looking for equity. One thing that I do have is, is trust in the strength of the human will. Um, I believe that ultimately we're going to do the right thing, but it needs to be deliberate and it needs to be intentional. Uh, this forum right here is a good example of the uh, very symbolic of the fact that the city of Davis is willing to have this conversation and open and really looking uh, to progress and move this conversation forward. Uh, I'm grateful to be a part of this town and I look forward to the um, as we grow as a community. Like I said, I came in September 1965. I honestly consider it is a privilege to live in Davis. And I have two suggestions for any kind of improvements, uh, free access to the press and free access to justice is essential. So I make two concrete recommendations and when we come maybe next year, we will address those issues. One, the, the press that we have in Davis, whether it's the Vanguard or the Davis Enterprise, I will suggest they should have a column under Dr. King's name where some of us that feel affected because of racial or any kind of issue, we can address it and discuss it with the community. This is one of my recommendations. My second recommendation, I saw Senator Lois walk here today. I saw also Assembly Member Yamada. My recommendation to the two legislators is that they should have some arrangement, access, so when members of affected minority group should not have to, be, uh, to struggle to go to them to ask them for help. These are my two recommendations and thank you for allowing me to participate. Again, I, I want to thank all of you with the most sincerest thank you on behalf of our community that you took the time today to be part of this panel so we can do more than celebrate Dr. King's life. But really know what can we do moving forward. I think it's important and I hope this becomes um, a staple in, in our celebration every January. Um, and I also want the Human Relations Commission for inviting me to be a part of today. So my parting thought is it's January. Many people make resolutions. I, I would just suggest everybody pick something to try to make one day be closer at hand than it is today. Thank you.